everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am so excited to play around with some gray food coloring. As you know from other videos on my YouTube channel, uh, black food colorings break into a lot of colors because they are made up of a mixture of reds, blues, and yellows that absorb to yarn at different rates. And therefore we see them split or break into various components. All of the grays that are in this Americolor Nifty Shades of Gray kit also are composed of blues, reds, and yellows. And I'm really curious to see how they'll break or how they'll look on some stroll fingering weight yarn. If you would like to learn more about any of the products I'm using in today's video, you can find affiliate links uh, to the products in the video description. From my initial quick looks, it looks like all six of these colors are composed of a mixture of blue number one, red number three and 40, and yellows number five and six. These vials also contain titanium dioxide, which is a opaque compound that is used to help, I think, bring more white into food coloring. I don't expect that this will have a huge consequence on our yarn dyeing. When I bought it, I did think that there was a black in here, but apparently I was wrong. I've never dyed with Americolor black before, uh, so I don't know exactly how it breaks, but we're gonna play with these six shades and doing some space dyeing and see initially um, what kind of hues we get from these colors. The yarn that we're using today, Stroll Fingering, is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I am going to let this yarn pre-soak in plain tap water for 20 to 30 minutes before we start dyeing our yarn. So I took the seals off of the bottles and then sort of just placed them onto the stamp paper towel to give a little first look at the colors. And we've got ash, fog, stone, slate, gunmetal, and then the, and the taupe over here. <laughs> and you can see that the colors look a little more green than the shades that we've got on top of the bottles. Um, it does not quite match up entirely. And I did see one review that said that they had a bit of a green cast. And I would say that that's sort of how it looks here. They're starting to sort of dissolve and spread through the, the paper towel a bit. And oh, I could flip it, flip it over and we can see um, the colors do look very much like um, we might expect for if we were doing a broken black or something. Now, the difference between when I flipped it over and what we see here, I think that that's some of the titanium dioxide that we're seeing, that chalky white. I'm expecting that that will rinse out <laughs> um, when we're done washing the yarn, but I'm really excited to see how this will go. So I guess this is our official first look at the colors, but I'm gonna get ready for us to go do some low immersion dyeing. In my steam pan, I put four cups of water plus one tablespoon of vinegar. And I'm now grabbing my pre-soaked yarn, my pre-soaked pre skein, and I am going to put it in. The steam pan that I'm using, and you can find a link to that in the video description as well, um, is, it's just like a hotel, like for catering, it's a nice steam pan, but with one skein of yarn you can get things spread out a reasonable amount and you can see that with the four cups of water that's just enough um, that it is just barely barely covered all right I turned on the heat and we are getting hot and I thought it would be fun to start with a drop or two of each of the colors and then we can always add more as we see how things going but as an initial peak this should tell us something and actually, I'm going to shift this from the way I had it before, but I'll start with the lightest color, which is the fog. 
and oh yeah you can see that opaque it looks like paint it really does okay so then that oh and I got some on my hand but you can see it really is smeary like paint I wonder I wonder how that will come out um, or spread or what okay so the next is the this is the color stone whoops which apparently I'm afraid to squirt too much that one's kind of bubbly stone and then I'm planning to add more as I said eventually but here's our slate color then the gunmetal wow that's really viscous and here's the taupe which unlike the others is definitely more you know of a brown tone okay I've kind of got the food coloring arranged on the stove so we can see how it goes but I think I am now going to give this like a minute or maybe two minutes actually doesn't look like much right now but I'm gonna give this yeah I'm gonna think two minutes and then I might hit them with a spoon but that should be long enough to let some of the reds just absorb and then maybe start to spread out. The one other thing I want to do is cover this just lightly with some foil, which, there we go. That'll help trap some of the color in, but I will be back in two minutes been about two minutes and I see a little bit of spread around let's see we see some greenish spread around the stone I can see a hint of spread down there from one of the darker colors but I'm now going to sort of shimmy this in the liquid so with this first color you can see that the shimmy is giving us this chalky white and that is not the food coloring that is the titanium dioxide um, I do see a hint of a color and it does look grayish that is on uh, on the yarn and so here this time it's a chalky more of a chalky blue that's spreading out and that is the ash I think that's the one that I got on my finger which you know is actually fairly pigmented this one okay we've now got more of a chalky green in the spread and that one was stone okay this one is slate and I think the drops might have been smaller but these um, it's looking more it's still like a chalky green but it looks like there's a bit more red in it you can see there where I've tapped it some of the red is spreading out and then I think this one's the gunmetal and yeah this is definitely the most pigmented and that's actually a really beautiful color that's sort of spreading out around it it's definitely still more of a teal but I'm not seeing it looks like a bunch of the reds have struck but I'm not necessarily seeing the like a bright blue yet that I might with black and here's the taupe yeah, and this one we've got a chalky green. Eventually, I'll try like dip dyeing to break colors with each of these, but I sort of wanted to do something low immersion just to get a little bit of a feel for them and see about combining them. So, are these gray? No, <laughs> these aren't gray. Um, are they beautiful? yeah I mean if I have no idea if this powder blue is something that would is gonna stick around um, I'm gonna give this I think a little more time 
um, to sort of absorb and I can always go through and add more vinegar. I started with only one tablespoon because I know for with black that's not enough for the blues to absorb but with um, with blue with like violet that proportion is enough. Um, it just depends on if there's enough heat. Yeah and there's good heat even at the two ends. So I think that that's cool. Um, but again, like this chalkiness, that's something that I think would rinse out. So but I'm going to go ahead and give this, um, give this a little more time to see if like I end up losing a little more of the color and so it looks, starts looking white versus blue and green. But then I might come and hit it with some more color. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set a timer for 10 minutes and then we'll see where our yarn is at. But I am going to cover it up. It has been 10 minutes and things look pretty close to the way they did when we left it. I'm trying to think, that this gunmetal does remind me, I mean I guess a lot of these remind me of black. The This one seems a bit greener, the stone color. Okay, we've definitely got some blues. That one's pretty white. That one's got a little bit of blue. Yeah. There's definitely some blues left, but I think that that is the way that this project will be. Um, there's, and understandably, you know, you get more and more and more pigment as, like, we go down, at least with the grays. Um, and I think that these are fun to play with. I'm a little concerned about how the... Um, <laughs> how the titanium dioxide will rinse out, but I think that hopefully it'll be fine. One thing before I add more drops is I'm curious, okay you can see some of that teals, yeah those have not started to absorb yet, but that's, I don't know if you guys can see, that's all white coming out versus, yeah and we've got some blues there. Okay, so oh I know you spot. Um, I think at this point I'm about to add more color, but I think I also want to add more vinegar. I'm going to go ahead and add two more tablespoons of vinegar, just sort of sprinkling it on just to help the colors absorb. At the beginning, I didn't want things to absorb too, too quickly because I wanted to be able to get a feel of how they were breaking and that, you know, do they look similar to the blacks? Do they not? And um, yeah, so I think more vinegar will help some of those blues bind. But now I want to go through and I'm just going to add a bunch of drops. And sort of randomly. Okay, so that was four of fog. Oh. Okay, that was about four of the ash. So this is stone. If I was wearing gloves, then um, I would not be as... This one has some more air in it. <laughs> that was the stone. If I was wearing gloves, I wouldn't be getting this all over my hand. Slate. And new one here. Yeah, these ones like have a bit of air. Maybe they're just thick. Okay, this is the gunmetal. Gave us those deep big purples. You can see I'm adding on the edges. I don't mind if there's some white left behind, but okay. I didn't really count very well on that one. And then I'm going to add some more of the taupe. Yeah, so at some point, I do hope to do some. Into that edge. 
I do hope to do some dip dyeing with these so that way we can learn a little more about them. But now I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna cover it up and let this go for 10 minutes and then I'll come and poke it. It's been 10 minutes since I added many, many more drops of color. And it looks like some of the darkest ones have spread out a bit, some of the paler ones not as much. But now at this point, ooh, you can see them spreading. I am helping them along. Helping them sort of get into water so they can spread out and give us some really, I think, cool tones. Well, not necessarily like interesting, that's what I mean, versus like not necessarily cool colors. I mean, there's a lot of greens and blues, so I guess those are technically cool tones. But yeah, the way that this, I mean, right now it's looking we're get, like we're gonna get some like really nice dusty and muted colors in here. I am a little concerned about the color penetration to the bottom of the bottom of the yarn, but I mean, I think this is looking so cool. Um, yeah, I am a little afraid to like look, but clearly we've got some white in here, especially around um, some of these paler marks, but I hope that by sort of jiggling and wiggling, we're getting some good color throughout the whole thing. But, whoops, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of color in some of these regions. Um, so I think that, I'm curious how some of the originals, there's still a lot of blue in there. I might end up needing to hit it up with some more, I'm all right. Um, you want to keep in, <laughs> you want to be aware of heat getting trapped um, beneath the yarn. So, I think actually I might add a bit more water. What's amazing actually right now is this spot right here looks white. And the bare yarn was definitely not as white as this is looking right now. Um, but I'm gonna add a little more, yarn, more water, which means I'll probably also raise the heat a bit. But, and this means that the colors will probably spread out a bit more. So that's an additional four cups. Uh, not quite. Maybe a little less than four more cups of water that I have just added here. And now I am raising the heat up again. But this one spot that's looking rather white because of the like paint like qualities I think it's pretty cool um, even with the the blues spreading more I still think that this is going to be awesome but this uh, having a little more liquid will help a bit the one thing ooh yeah some of these reds are actually even sticking to the spoon um, one thing I'm not doing right now, I guess, is shifting the pan again because I do not want, um, I don't want to really move everything through. There's still, you know, there's a lot more water, but the yarn itself is still taking up a lot of the space. And so I think that this is going to be gorgeous, but now I'm going to bring the heat back down to low but it'll give a little more space for some of the dye to spread out and strike. I guess now we have equivalent of about three tablespoons of vinegar in almost eight cups of water. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more um, just because I can now. On another video, someone asked like, oh, would it help to use a spray bottle to add the vinegar a bit more evenly? And yeah, that definitely, definitely could help. Um, it would help if you, you know, you already had it in there. I mean, there are times when sometimes I'll just add a splash of vinegar without, um, I'll add a splash of vinegar without much thought at all, um, to the measurement. But I do like to try to measure for all of you. Um, I'm 
really, really liking the way that these colors are coming together. Uh, so now I'm going to leave this on just low heat for another 10 minutes and then we'll come back and see. I wanted to give you a close up of what's going on with some of these colors. I'm about to cover it back up, but you can see some of the reds and the blues and ultimately the only place where it's actually looking white white is over there. But I'm now going to go put the cover on and set the timer for 10 minutes. It has been 10 minutes and I'm curious to see how much of the colors have cleared. Oh, that's actually pretty clear. I still see some blues in there. Some, some blue down here. A lot of color right there. All right, let's go ahead and flip the yarn because I am curious to see how much color there is, how much color there's not. Actually, this looks pretty good. Um, looks like most of the color is in the yarn. Oh, and this is beautiful. I'm not sure if the contrast of it is coming up, but there are some really nice dark sections and paler sections. Um, it's a nice, really beautiful variegated yarn. Okay, I am gonna turn off the heat at this stage. Almost all the color is in the yarn, and while there's a little bit of blue left, that can absorb while things cool off. So now, I'm actually gonna place, there's a little bit of blue left, I'm gonna place the foil back on. And I'm not even worried about trying to get it on top, I'm just trying to trap some of the heat in there. And it'll cool off over the course of probably a couple hours or something, but then we'll come back and wash the yarn so we can see a little bit more about how this paint-like stuff washes out and whatnot. The yarn has cooled off and all of the food coloring colors in the yarn but you can still see this chalky stuff that is that hopefully will rinse out without too much trouble. But let's go wash our beautiful, beautiful yarn. I am going over to my pan, picking up the yarn and squeezing out as much of the water as I can over there. And I see a lot of chalky white water with the only place where there's a little bit of color is where I think the drop was near the wall of, you can see how opaque that is, was where the water, was, or the drop of food coloring was near the wall of the bin. But otherwise, all of the um, food coloring molecules that we are used to have, uh, has absorbed to the yarn. But you can see, you know, you can barely see my hand at the bottom. This is so chalky. So I have a feeling, yeah, look at that rinse water. We'll need to do a fair number of rinses, but hopefully it'll all come out. But the yarn itself is lovely. Um, I don't know, I'm, yeah, the chalk seems to be rinsing out. Thankfully, even the areas where it was more concentrated. I just don't know how long it'll take. Normally, with this much yarn and this level of color, where no, none of the blues or purples are coming out, um, I would do a couple rinses, add a little bit, just some Dawn dish soap, but you could use whatever kind. Um, I'm going to use like a clear dish soap. Uh, you know, I rinse out the soap and then that would be done. But this time, I am concerned with not just rinsing out the thigh. I want to get, as I squeeze it, you can see, I think it's just soaked in to the, to the fibers. So that's just going to take a little bit more time. It's a very, very fine, opaque powder. But we have this yarn that has brown... I'm not seeing a lot of green, a little bit of green around that brown. Um, some deep purples and, and nice blues. So I think that these colors are beautiful. Um, I'm just concerned about 
some washing of it. And let me just show you. Here is the original basin. And you can just see how opaque and cloudy that water is. So, if there's one thing that would make me not want to use these dyes again, it depends on just how much washing it's going to require to remove that from the yarn. Um, otherwise, like some of the hues are similar to black. And I don't know if the Americolor Black would have that in. Maybe I'll rinse out the base of the thing in case it's like staying there. No, not. Um, I'm not sure if the America or Black would have this in there or not, but that's something else to consider. Um, maybe. So there's definitely, definitely still there. I will keep washing. I have a feeling this will take a few more, a few more rinses. I'll keep washing until the water is hopefully uh, transparent again, and then I, but already it's definitely better. Like it's still cloudy and hard to see my hand at the bottom, but it's not as bad as it was before. Um, maybe you just need to use a lot bigger volume of water to help with this, but once the end is dry, I'll come back with some final conclusions. This finished yarn is beautiful. We've got some hints of purple, a lot of blue, some brown, and some hints of green too. Uh, some of this is because the taupe uh, had some more yellows and stuff in it, I think, and gave us more of the brown than some of these blues that we got from the grays. But I think that this colorway is really beautiful and sort of makes me think of a tide pool. However, this yarn is not gray, and with this Nifty Shades of Gray food coloring set, I know many of you were hoping that I could have finally achieved some grays with food coloring. The technique that I used on this yarn was one that would maximize the amount of breaking. I added drops of color directly from the food coloring bottles onto the hot yarn. So that way we could see the red strike fast, what colors spread out, and sort of compare the amount of pigments between the different shades. With the exception of the taupe, which is a warmer tone in brown, the other ones look pretty similar to a lot of blacks that we've explored in the past, in that we've got these uh, deep, deep, deep purples and with the blues that surround it. What's fun is that we do have some shades in here that are a bit less potent. So it's a little easier to get, I think, some dilutions. The downside was the silicon dioxide, which was that chalky pigment. I think I got most of it out, but there's a few patches where there might still be some in the fiber. And so that was not as much fun to deal with. Uh, I think that that's something that would help change the tone, say, if you were dealing with icing, to give you a more white base uh, for then a little bit of pigment to go through. But that's not something that's as helpful when you're using it to dye yarn. This yarn is not gray, but that doesn't mean that you can't achieve a gray with food coloring. Eh, with an asterisk there. You could potentially get a gray with these food colorings if you were aiming for a more semi-solid yarn, using the food coloring for all over, color, all over coverage to let the colors lay on top of one another. However, if you want a true gray, my personal recommendation, skip the food coloring and go to a commercial dye. Rit, Jacquard, Dharma, they all have multiple shades of gray that you can use for, that are intended to dye fabric and yarn and don't have some of the extras that these might have in order to try to dye food-based products. I have ordered the Americolor Black because I'm curious to see how that breaks. Uh, I know the Americolor line has multiple, multiple colors of food coloring, and I'm still really excited to play with these shades more in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I'd 
also love for you to leave a comment and let me know what you thought. Would you like to try using these gray food colorings or maybe would you pass and go straight to commercial dyes? Finally, did you know that you can buy the yarn that has been dyed in these Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube videos? Check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store where I have dozens of skeins of yarn that were dyed in past and upcoming YouTube videos. So you can watch the yarn get made and then bring it home. How fun is that? Thank you so much for watching.